All right, guys, I just took a train into Grand Central from suburban Connecticut. This is a suburban commuter train. They've got vinyl seats, fluorescent lighting that you find saying grades. And we are in the belly of Grand Central or in the basement of it. So to get into Grand Central, we're going to have to go upstairs. Grand Central being one of the busiest, if not the busiest, train stations in Manhattan, the second being Penn Station. So both bring in thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people each day. And then this is what your life would look like if you lived in suburban Connecticut and you worked in the city. You would just get off the train every day and come here into this basement and then walk upstairs to Grand Central. On the train ride, I should have remarked about the train ride, um, some cars were dead silent and it was all business people um, and they just didn't want to be bothered by anything, just very much in their own zones. Whereas other people, there were, there were families and there's, there's laughter. And then up in other cars, there are people just talking about their problems, like just daily life stuff. Some woman was talking about her thyroid issue to a friend that probably didn't want to hear it. So when you ride on these trains, your experience is really dependent upon who's on each individual car. Anyway, we are coming on to, I think one of the most visually, aesthetically pleasing parts of the station here. It's called the Oyster Bar Restaurant. Let's just go in and have kind of like a quick um, look around here. It's, uh, I think they shock more than a million oysters every year here. Um, very popular place for tourists and locals alike. And this is a, uh, this is still kind of the basement of Grand Central. See tourists walking through here and travelers in general. Some nice arches here. And this is the uh, kind of food court. And it's 12 o'clock right now, so this is like the lunch rush, I guess you could say. Show you some more of what they have here, just some croissants. And uh, some cookies, coffee, cold, hardinary. Some nice kind of artwork here. Um, and so it goes on and on, 106, 107, 108, 109. So each of these signs indicate which track you're going to. And then underneath the track sign, if a train is running, it'll show you. Right here, this is the Croton Harmon line, right? And then those are the stops. So, you know, pretty well organized for sure. And again, let me just go back and show you some, some more of these food court things here. They had, I think, Shake Shack. This is called Donut Plant New York City. And on and on. So there's, you know, there's a number of these food spots. If you come down here, um, you won't be limited for options. Now, let me br bring you the main yeah, to the main concourse. Go up these stairs. There's multiple stairs down here, multiple ways you can get the main concourse. Um, we were coming from the dining concourse. So here, let me turn around. We've got double stairs. This is all design. That's the main concourse right here and then stairs down there. So the stairwell here and to my right lead down below right to the dining concourse. 
which is directly below there, which we are just at. And so here's the main concourse, totally beautiful. Um, they've got three incredibly large windows here. They did a renovation, I believe, in the 90s. And uh, during the renovation, they were cleaning the walls and the ceiling. What they found was on the ceiling some incredible art. And so there's this green ceiling. Beautiful. And uh, there's people, lots of people behind me. Look at this. Look at all these people. Taking tourist pictures. But anyway, um, kind of lost my train of thought there. Damn. Oh, so they were cleaning up and they found this amazing art on the ceiling and thus Grand Central has beautiful green ceiling. In front is the information booth. I was reading an article that the clock is valued. It's high. I'm gonna get close to it. At roughly $20 million. So there's a look at it. I'm not really sure why, but that's what they They've written down, they meaning some author. Um, it's an open floor plan. If you look, there are no benches whatsoever. You can't sit down here unless you sit against the wall or just sit on the floor. But it's completely wide open. Um, it's well policed. There's, you can see, I think three or four policemen right there. And there's always someone, you know, watching to make sure people don't get out of hand here because it is after all a city and some people like it in any city can get wild really quickly um, I believe the station is open from 2 in the morning sorry is cl is closes at 2 in the morning and then opens at 5 so it would be closed three hours every day but open you know 365 days a year and I'll have to get the numbers for you, but it, it must have hundreds of thousands of people just coming in and out every day. It's just a really remarkable, um, really remarkable space and really remarkable architectural feat that if they built it today, would be in the billions without a doubt, um, given all the craftsmanship and the material that they use, and just the raw height. I mean, if you look at, look at where people are, and then you look at where the ceiling is, that's 50, 60, 70 feet high, and then you've got this um, very detailed uh, stonework in that arch there, as well as the arch itself. I mean, how do you support the arch? I'm not really sure, that's all engineering, but um, 